Members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished delegates, guests, and friends. In my inaugural in June, I spoke about tradition versus convention, the link between preparation and innovation. Health IT, advances in military medicine, women's health, and my Chinese heritage. I also had a couple sentences in there about Star Trek. So the press coverage surprised me the next morning. One headline said, new AMA president beams into office. <laughs> Another article started with a quote from the prime directive. So today I thought I'd talk about the view of healthcare from my vantage point as your AMA president and about the great things the AMA is doing on behalf of patients and physicians. But let's get this out of the way up front. Today I'm going to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> In my travels, I've had very attentive audiences eager to hear our message. I also want to thank everyone for your warm hospitality during my visits. I've spoken about AMA traditions and their impact today. And I want to tell you about how we're mobilizing that tradition and putting it to work in Washington and in the state houses. In the process, we can also perhaps uncover some cosmic truths. You know I'm a Trekkie, but I'm also a big Star Wars fan, a movie with its own mythology. In fact, in 2001, Jedi was reported to be the fourth most popular religion in Great Britain. Star Wars was also a source of my nickname right out of medical school. I was an OBGYN intern, and we used to get called to the emergency department all the time to see women. And so I'd be down there seeing women as an OB intern, and I gained the name obi Wa Kenobi. <laughs> so I knew I'd really arrived one day when I went down to see a woman with abdominal pain, and the chart was marked, obi Wa called. And then there was the nurse at 2 a.m. with a day-old cinnamon roll going, help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. So I was Obi-Wan during most of my internship. Could have been worse, job of the hut, you know, Chewy the Wookiee, something like that. Anyway, Star Wars also reminds me of the struggles that the AMA has against the dark sides of the Force public and private bureaucracies, red tape, predatory lawsuits, broken, busted, and constricting formulas. And in this high-stakes environment, Master Yoda offers a simple but powerful directive for our work. Do or do not. There is no try. And do we have to end the sustainable growth rate, developed a long time ago in a reality far, far away. Last spring, we made another run down the trenches, firing our proton torpedoes towards the exhaust port to destroy this Death Star. We did come away with a viable alternative to the SGR and achieved something that we hadn't had before, a framework to end the SGR with bipartisan and bicameral support and backed by more than 600 physician groups. And now, we're delivering this message to Congress. Congress must eliminate the SGR during this lame duck session. And we know why. It's essential to a sustainable practice to take away this uncertainty hanging over our heads. And it makes perfect sense. Together, we have an opportunity to show the American people that Congress can work together and pass meaningful legislation to strengthen Medicare. We will work with you, and we will work on our legislators as we push to end the SGR. Be sure to keep up to date with www.fixmedicarenow.org for the latest of these efforts. You know we're doing everything we can it might not happen during this lame duck session, but the end of the SGR is not a matter of if, 
but now it's a matter of when. Here's an interesting fact. Each of the six Star Wars movie, they included a line, I have a bad feeling about this. And that's the common reaction to ICD-10. <laughs> if ICD-10 were a droid, it'd be serving Darth Vader. We'd see 13,000 codes explode into 68,000. Five-fold increase like that. Things like sucked into a jet engine, burned by flaming water skis. There are codes for that. We all know that ICD-10 is expensive to implement. What we don't know is whether it will actually improve care. For more than a decade, the AMA has kept ICD-10 at bay. We'd like to freeze it in carbonite like Han Solo. Speaking of implementation problems, this brings me to the Sunshine Act. Many of us had the same reaction to that. I have a bad feeling about this. And again, those instincts were correct. Financial interactions with drug and medical device manufacturers are now being reported online to the public. Through AMA pressure, we did get provisions to give physicians a chance to review and correct the data before it gets posted to the public. Unfortunately, the Sunshine Act has already burned some of us. The review website was supposed to go online in January, but it didn't happen until August. Remember the healthcare.gov fiasco about one year ago? Well, it turns out the same contractor designed this one. It has a 300-page instruction manual, longer than the blueprints of the Death Star. And then there's incomplete and inaccurate data. There's an example of one Baltimore surgeon who was surprised to learn that on the website, it was listing he had received a lavish $78,000 in food and beverages from the industry. It was actually for consulting work he had done for them, but it was misclassified. Of the 550,000 physicians listed on the website, only 26,000 got through the 300-page instructions and the glitchy website to review their data and correct any inaccuracies. Let me be clear, the AMA wants transparency. It helps patients make a better and more informed decision about their medical care. But a glitchy website, no time for review and revision, and CMS's own admission of problems with one-third of the data all cast doubt on all the information on that site. And we know that misinformation leads to misinterpretations. It harms reputations and undermines our patients' trust in us. And it discourages the delivery improvements that benefit those very patients. Most relationships with industry drive innovation and advance professional medical education. It makes for better physicians and more effective treatments. We are, however, having some impact. Last week, CMS came around to the AMA's view that if you're a speaker contributing to an independent continuing medical education activity, you're not subject to be reported on the, on the Sunshine Act. This will encourage the exchange of information, and we led the way on this. We will continue to work with CMS to make sure the Sunshine Act enhances transparency, but that the data is accurate and in context. Accurate information presented in context can also save lives. As we all know, Dallas was home of the nation's first Ebola patient, obviously a cause for concern. But misinformation and lack of information led to panic and paranoia. The AMA was looked to as a source for reliable information, and so we built the AMA's online Ebola Resource Center, where the most updated information from the CDC, JAMA, and other public health groups are out there. So I'd advise you to check it out. And in addition to our efforts to prepare and treat Ebola, a sharper focus by the US and the international community is key to contain the outbreak in West Africa. 
As I said in my time on fascination, the dynamic nature of this disease requires a dynamic response. We need to talk to and learn from each other. I have every confidence in the CDC and in our team effort. This fight can't be won by one person or a single entity. We have to stand together. So the AMA, hospitals, and nursing put forth a plan to manage care of Ebola patients. We must ensure that hospital and clinical staff can provide safely good patient quality care, and that nurses, physicians, and staff have the proper training, equipment, and protocols to be safe while providing that care. In fact, tomorrow, we're going to present an update from the field here in this room. Captain Arjun Srinivasan, a CDC expert, will be here to discuss how physicians can prepare for and care for Ebola patients. He'll be in this ballroom at 4.30 p.m. and will also be streaming this live so it's greater than just this room. Please make time for this important address tomorrow. And also, this is a time for preparation, not panic. Accurate information transmitted in a usable way was the promise of electronic health records as well. But it's also a challenge for physicians in the decade to come. At the AMA, we see the vast potential to improve patient care and safety through electronic health records, telemedicine, and the exchange of health data. But we also know that change can be difficult. Faced with this monumental transition, a lot of physicians are saying, I have a bad feeling about this. Today's EHRs are difficult to use. They eat up hours of data entry. They interfere with face-to-face -face patient care. And in some cases, they actually degrade documentation. Meaningful use exacerbates these issues. So we want the government to change its position on how it regulates EHRs so vendors can focus less on federal mandates and more on the needs of their customers, physicians. We're calling for a more flexible approach to meaningful use, to expand and extend hardship exemptions, and improve quality reporting and solutions that lead to usability improvements. We cannot let the technology rule us. We must rule the technology. And like a Jedi warrior, we cannot be adverse to technology, but we can't rely on it solely. We need to continue to use our own senses, training, and clinical acumen. Now, there are some additional issues that transcend the SGR and electronic health records and pose new threats to Medicare stability. And all these threats, once again, physicians are saying, I have a bad feeling about this. Physicians that are providing care to Medicare patients are at risk to be swamped by a tsunami of penalties. In fact, they add up to more than 13% decrease in income by the end of the decade. And this sits on top of the possible 21% cut that we already face if the SGR isn't stopped. And we're not just talking about the sequester. There's a patchwork of laws and regulations, such as meaningful use, the physician quality reporting system, and value-based modifier program. It sounds confusing, and it is. It's enough to even stump the protocol droid C-3PO. This hodgepodge cuts physicians' time with patients, it wastes energy and resources, and it fuels professional dissatisfaction. And ironically, it discourages the very investment in new technology and new approaches that are supposed to improve and promote our care for patients. If they aren't aligned, it forces physicians to register and report their information multiple times over and over again in different formats. At the AMA, we're seeking to get that streamlined. Doctors should be able to make a one-time report to meet all the requirements for Medicare. Report once, use many. And they should create the efficiency and improvements in care that we were promised. 
Beyond reporting problems, there's things like you have to meet 100% of meaningful use requirements. It's all or nothing. It's unfair, unrealistic, and unworkable. Thanks to heavy pressure from the AMA, CMS just recently reopened the hardship exception to avoid penalties. The new deadline is November 30th. The AMA encourages all physicians concerned about a penalty to apply. Now, more meaningful technology is telemedicine. Last June, we passed a great body of policy on this, and we're at the forefront of this movement. We've developed policy to guide lawmakers, and we're driving it forward. We're showing how telemedicine can deliver the right care at the right time for our patients. Using real-time interaction through online portals, remote monitoring, and storm forward tools. Data can be sent from the patient to the physician, like a photo of a concerning mole to the dermatologist. Or a physician can follow their patient's blood glucose results or blood pressure readings. And patients and doctors can now interact through secure video services. Not like a simple hologram of Princess Leia de delivering a message, but a two-way communication route between patient and physician. Patients that use telemedicine are better at managing their chronic diseases, which improves outcomes, reduces costs, and expands access to care. Now, to comply with local laws, physicians need to be licensed in the same state as the patient, not the other side of the globe. But this also requires a streamlined licensing process to practice telemedicine in multiple states. We applaud the Federation of State Medical Boards in the model they've developed to expedite licensing. It would help telemedicine flourish, and states will be able to keep their authority to protect patients. We also need to encourage coverage and reimbursement of telemedicine services and fewer restrictions within the Medicare system. We want our patients to use it if they need it. So we need to lift geographic restrictions, free up its use in alternative payment models, and cover due eligibles so they can use these services. So telemedicine, SGR, EHR, ICD-10, Sunshine, these are all part of the vast galaxy of issues the AMA is addressing on behalf of our patients and our physicians. And all this is in addition to and supported by the three strategic goals that we share. Our moonshots to improve health outcomes for our patients, improve physician satisfaction, and improve education for our future doctors. Our hard work and trust is, is earning trust and support of more and more physicians. I'm proud to report that membership is up for the fourth straight year. It's kind of like the box office for Star Wars and its sequels and prequels. Our AMA has accomplished so much this year, but none of us can go it alone. We face issues so often that have us all thinking, I have a bad feeling about this. But recognizing potential problems is the first step towards overcoming them. To do, you must start. And we've taken that step. We are fighting that bad feeling with positive action on behalf of our physicians and our patients. This year, I've traveled across this country and sometimes across the planet. On these long flights, I would have loved to have made the jump to light speed in the Millennium Falcon. Instead, it's more like flying the Daily Pigeon in the middle seat. But I'm grateful for the privilege of representing RAMA. I'm seeing how physicians are navigating today's challenges in healthcare and how the AMA can help. Obi-Wan said, the force is an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, it permeates us, it binds the galaxy together. In that way, the house of medicine and the power generated and put to purpose by America's physicians acting together through the AMA is a force to be reckoned with. This means that all of us, speaking with one voice at the AMA, 
speaking so loud on behalf of our profession and our patients that all can hear. This is, as Obi-Wan also observed, can make us more powerful than you can possibly imagine. So may the force be with us. Thank you.